Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the local podcast. Today is episode 59. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Brian Nicholas Jewelry. They are Westmoreland's best kept secret for all your jewelry needs, and they're located conveniently inside of the Pawn and Jewelry Exchange right in downtown Greensburg, right down the road. They're a husband and wife team, Brian and Ashley. They're there to bring your jewelry ideas to life and make the jewelry buying experience something that you won't soon forget. They're there to help you out with all of your jewelry repairs, engagement rings, just because gifts, or appraisal needs. On site, you have a master jeweler and a certified appraiser. You don't have to send those things out and then wait a couple days to hear things back. They're right there at your fingertips. You can find them on Instagram and Facebook at Brian Nicholas Jewelry, or you can just stop in and say hi at the Pond and Jewelry Exchange. There's convenient parking right there at the pawn shop. You won't have to go search for a parking spot. So uh, what are you guys waiting for? Get down there and check it out. This episode is also brought to you by Greensburg Video. If you and your company are in need of social media videos, web videos, broadcast TV commercials, anything that you can think of that has to do with photography or video, you can hit me up at greensburgvideo.com or gbgvideo.net. Also, don't forget that you can advertise on this very podcast. If you're interested in that, reach out. On today's show, we're getting a really great history lesson from Tom Harold. He's the guy that runs Greensburg Then and Now on Facebook, and he plays a major part in running the Baltimore Meyer Historical Society. This one's going to be pretty fun and educational. Let's do it. Welcome to the Local 724 Podcast in 3, 2, 1. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Local Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Hauser. Today, we have Tom Harold on from the Baltimore Historical Society, and uh, he's also the guy who runs Greensburg Then and Now. Tom, how are you doing? I'm doing well today, and you? I'm doing very well. Can you give us just kind of like a little intro about uh, you know what you do at the Historical Society? Uh, right now, I am president of uh, the, the group and uh, kind of keep uh, things on the ball and try to keep things moving along. Uh, our biggest challenge at this point is, is raising money uh, and keeping the lights on. So uh, then trying to get to, to the public in new formats that we have not touched in the last 25 or so years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, what kinds of, what kinds of things do you guys have there? I mean, like if, if you're listening to this and you're a fan of like Greensburg then, and now, you know, that we get to see these like really cool before and, and after pictures of Greensburg and what the main street used to look like, or what uh, Pennsylvania Avenue used to look like, things like that. But, um, you know, what other things do you guys have down there? That's important to the community. Well, we maintain um, a complete set of records uh, as family files of local families and their histories. And we have about 1,500 to 1,800 uh, different families and their branches. And uh, we've been collecting that for probably the last 30 years of that. So it carries information that other people had uh, brought with them and then added to our files. And they're pretty unique. The only other place that we know that has that is Indiana. Um, and it, it holds those little brick wall breaking things that, that people were looking for to do their genealogy studies. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have the library to pack us up. The library is about 3,500 books, uh, well over 200 of them are just on family histories. And then the rest are on uh, local history, the county histories, and uh, that type of format. We carry a complete set of, of uh, church records and cemetery records, uh, high school yearbooks in case you want to see what your mother looked like. Uh, when she went to school, we, we now are preserving that and uh, have found those to be a, a really big hit. And uh, along with, uh, you know, newspapers, obituaries, um, uh, again, all the uh, different types of, of books um, on the local history uh, as we go through everything. And that's just a part of us. 
That's super interesting. I mean, like, how do you guys acquire this stuff? Who brings this? Who brings the, the like the family information stuff to you? The, we've had over the years uh, because we've had a, a, a center where they could come to a library uh, for better than 20 years now. Um, the visitors who come from all over the country and the world uh, to visit us because, again, we're holding pieces that are not on the Internet or in any other locale because of that. And they uh, add to our knowledge and history as we go on. So almost every one of them who come there and see what we have then want to add pieces to it. So it includes, again, the family histories that they have. And a lot of times we'll get photographs and we'll get little bits and pieces of information about the families uh, that make genealogy truly interesting and knowing that uh, uh, not everybody's uh, family line was uh, the the best in the world. And there are uh, black sheep in every one of the families from, from here to, you know, any part of that. Um, That's pretty interesting. Do you, uh, do you have any like, you know, right off the top of your head, do you have any interesting stories of any, uh, any fun, fun facts of any families around well, here? You know, the most fascinating book that we have to read is from a magistrate from years ago, uh, like at the turn of the century. And he recorded all the cases and the outcome of those cases. And um, that also brings into the family things and, uh, any problem we have today are the same problems they had a hundred years ago, uh, but they had a better sense of humor about writing about things. And uh, there was no real fear of uh, being uh, politically correct or incorrect. Uh, and, and, and the man wrote with a bit of humor at this and just to sit and listen to somebody else read the outcomes of those cases uh, alone uh, is a really hilarious of, of uh, uh, how family things go on. And, and you realize then um, things change, but certain things never do change. Um, it, it's uh, it is an amazing uh, book to read. And, and again, it's one of those pieces that we own um, that are not normal for most historical societies. In fact, few carry the kind of, of uh, numbers of books that we have. Um, along with those books that we have cataloged, we have another 5,000 books that still need to be cataloged and need volunteers to help us put those in so that they will become part of that, that library. Yeah. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of coming down and uh, visiting with you and, and taking the tour of the place. And it, I'll tell you what, it was overwhelming to say the least. I mean, there is so much stuff, so much knowledge and history jam-packed into that building you couldn't even believe it yeah we're we're quite proud of you know we have a 25 year history with uh our being a, a non-profit uh but a lot of our records go back beyond that because our founder was a genealogist and had written books so uh, along with the things that we do we publish 135 books of local history church records um uh, sermons from pastors and uh, their journals, plus uh, almost anybody who wants to write uh, history, uh, either in fiction or nonfiction, we publish those books. Uh, so that that allows us to do some things. And we just set it up now that we have all those on PDF files mm -hmm. and no longer are doing uh, it in a very arduous hand style system. So we can print on demand with that, um, uh, those books. And we'll soon be able to put those out again and do the full list uh, of books. And we're adding books to it. Uh, one that we're adding right now, and the first one we wanted to add was the 75 years history of uh, Bavard, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the, Coal patch town, uh, mm -hmm. or as we know it, Crow's Nest. And uh, we're going to be looking at doing those kind of things of republishing a lot of the, the history uh, things that have come along, or church records, or anniversaries that usually have 
uh, a lot of the older family names in there and tidbits of history that are just uh, fascinating. And again, as you had mentioned, running Greensburg then and now, um, I'm sitting at the perfect spot of having thousands upon thousands of photographs and thousands of stories to tell. So mm -hmm. what's happening with the site now is people are talking and they, they, they're talking amongst themselves and they're meeting each other again and, and reconnecting. Uh, you know, the one that we just had was uh, uh, the Greensburg show systems that used to go for around all the different parks and uh, places and a lot of the people who've been in those on that show wagon. And unfortunately, Greensburg Rec had lost uh, all the pictures and all the information from those six, 1960s to, uh, I think, about 1970, 1980 uh, era. And there has been a lot of people who did their first performances on that, that show wagon mm -hmm. um, and, and reliving all those things add to the character of, of the area and the history of it. And, and again, as I said, uh, this is the members doing this. I used to put in, I don't know, four or 500 pictures per year. I'm down to about a hundred, 150 pictures a year. And it is the members who are stimulating the conversations. And mm -hmm. which is again, part of what I was after was to get the community to talk to each other and, realize we have common threads to work with uh and and there are bound by our history here so uh that part works uh to that in fact i've just now made uh greensburg then and now is a, a now a part of baltimore historical society and will belong to them completely um it will not be a separate entity unto itself Nice. Yeah, it, it's really interesting to see, uh, you know, because right now, Baltimore isn't um, you. You've told me before you guys are in the process of digitizing a yes. lot of your stuff. Yes. And like you said, with, you know, the interest and, and things from all over the world, uh, that's because of things that aren't on the Internet. But with the addition of Greensburg then and now, we, like you said, we've seen a lot of cool things right there at our fingertips, right on the internet. And, you know, if I'm sitting in a waiting room uh, or something like that, and, and I'm searching through this, now this is where I saw uh, the photos, um, I think just last week of, there was a whole, a, a bunch of photos, I forget how many, maybe 20 that came out and it was all of just uh, before and after shots of, of Greens, well, before shots of Greensburg. And it was just, um, it was fascinating to see like, just how like, it seems like life was just, just like it is with us, just so normal looking, but it looks like there were just props, <laughs> like all these old cars and the old buildings. It looked like a movie. It was so yeah. wild to see yeah. these things. And I don't know. I, something about it, just, it hooks me. I see an old photo and I try and figure out in my brain where exactly that's at, where the vantage point was, where were these people standing when they took that photo? And then I'm like, okay, now if I went there, what would I be seeing? And then I try and like figure out like, oh, so the Greensburg, the courthouse courtyard outside wasn't there, you know, all this time there were other buildings there or blah, blah, yes. blah. You know, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's fascinating. I love yeah. it. And, and that's a fascinating, the, the courthouse and the courtyard itself are all fascinating that originally um, Greensburg was set up and that entire block was set up to have a, a courtyard all the time. And uh, the people that, that had set that up, uh, ran out of favor with the political system and then a new political system came in and they sold all the lots for $278 is what they made on selling that entire block off. And that's all the way wow. around main street down Ottoman and across Pennsylvania Avenue until you ran into uh, the, the yard for the, the County jail. Um, mm -hmm. So and that story I had known long before I had started this this part. And, and I know that we spent a lot more money to get that part back. Um, 
but they've done a fine job with putting the courtyard in uh, and putting that part together. Architecturally, I'm allowed to say I'm not a big fan of George Jetson stuff and, and how they mended the two together. Yeah, it's as good as I guess you could get. Uh, I'm more of a classical builder uh, yeah. guy. And, and again, that's where I came out of. I was in construction most of my life. Right. Uh, and, and it ended my career as, as a uh, uh, operation manager for uh, uh, the entire development group. So uh, those things were in my blood. I was the guy who was always building tree houses growing up. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, again, I'm lucky. I am. I am uh, where I sit uh, now. Is I'm an eighth generation uh, child of Westmoreland County. I've had uh, that many generations that have been in the county, uh, and never more than 15 miles away from there has been my family. We were all out by Harold School is where we all started. So, wow, um, we've been here for a while. Yeah, that's it. I knew your I knew your background was in uh, construction because we've we've talked about that before. How how did you get from construction to what made the history click? What what about uh, the historical society and and the history of this this area really kind of grabbed you? Yeah, you're going to regret this. I have a story for everything in it. That's all right. That's what podcasts are all about. So. My area that I live in is is close to um, um, Lynch Field. And mm-hmm. if you're familiar with that area, there's a house there that has the animal rescue or the animal uh, shelter place there. Yes. Yep. Well, that was my great, great grandfather's uh, house. Oh, OK. And his daughter uh, was my great grandmother. And I got to spend a lot of time with that lady because she had a broken hip and was blind. So she was bedridden. And every time my great aunts went to a store, I got to go down and keep her company. And I started doing that when I was about 10 years old. And she told me the history of this place and all the things that went on in the family. Uh, Women uh, usually are much better at keeping the history of the family. So that's where it got instilled into me was History was a a big part as I grew up. In fact, my great grandfather's four, we were not part of the Harold family. We were Pennsylvania Dutch and uh, had nothing to do with the other Harolds. And then I found out why there had been a a family argument over land uh, that uh, they didn't quite get to. But, uh, you know, we came, I now live in Rosetown and that's where I grew up at. Uh, my family's been here since 1927 in downtown Rosie Town. So um, that's where it all came from. And that's where it started. How I got to Baltimore was I was working at Westmoreland uh, uh, history place out there at, at uh, Hannestown, helping to okay. put together yeah one of the uh, log cabins, because again, my construction background, I knew how to rig and and hook up and do all those things. So I was there and a couple gentlemen had been watching me for the last few days uh, doing this. And uh, they walked over and introduced themselves and said, you know, we know your last name's Harold. How would you like to work on a schoolhouse with your last name on it? (laughs) And I went, you mean the Herald School? And they said, yeah, how do you know about that? I said, because I worked in that school when I was in high school, sanding desktops uh, for Hempfield Township is on a federal uh, program that they had where they hired uh, students. And that's how I knew about that. But I could never figure out how Herald there and my Herald were connected. So um that's how I ended up there. And that was 27 years ago uh, that I went into to Baltimore and uh, ended up being in charge of the restoration work. Mm-hmm. And we finished that up in 2003. So I have I am doing what I was supposed to do for a long time. And if you ask any of the teachers who tried to teach me in Hempfield, uh, they would tell you I was the worst student in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> um, that um, 
I had no potential to be anything except somebody who could dig a ditch really well. Oh, geez. Um, and that's that's just it. And I I guarantee you, I have roasted them as many times as I could at every school board meeting I've ever been at <laughs> by yep. introducing myself as I'm the student that you never could figure out what in the world he was going to do. And we're positive he was never going to amount to a hill beans. So um, <laughs> I'm just that character. Well, that's good. Let him know. Yeah. <laughs> so since you guys have, you know, gone into digitizing and things like that, <clears throat> what I guess does the future of the historical society look like? How, how are we going to catapult, you know, we're starting and how are we going to catapult this into, into well, the future here? We just opened up uh, and started our, our new web page. Um, it needed to have some adjustments to it and how I see the future is we, put these digitized pieces together, um, we're going to be able then to rent you out or spend, you can spend time on our site to get to these pieces that aren't available unless you came here by us gaining your credit card. And then as you got into the different sites, you paid uh, to, to get into those. And then you would be able to get copies of the pieces you needed to put mm -hmm. your genealogy history together or that you were a historic historian who was looking for information and the, the local history would be online at, at a fee price because uh, maintaining two buildings is uh, uh, somewhere around 12 to fourteen thousand dollars a year it is not a cheap piece mm -hmm. to own old buildings and uh, we've got to figure out some way of doing that yeah. And, and now with COVID, we're not getting any members or anybody coming there. And that's where we made a lot of our money at uh, to maintain those buildings. Uh, and an yeah. example of that is we just had to put a, a roof over an addition and um, we had to come up with almost $11,000. Um, so uh, we're still trying to recoup some of that money back again. Um so you got to do something and yeah. the way we're going to be doing it is, is through that web page and partially through the Facebook page um, and trying to put that network together. And, and again, we're looking for anybody who has that kind of uh, knowledge and wants to either a help with uh, the digitizing because we have all the equipment to go from audio to VCR to negatives and photographs and 35 millimeter. And mm -hmm. we put together a room that we can put four people in there working quite comfortably. Uh, and then some of the pieces are, are mobile enough that we can send you out to another part of the, the building. The building is 12,000 square feet. So we have the room um, to spread out and we meet there every Wednesday night uh, from six o'clock to eight to start doing this digitizing. Uh, but when I look at the thousands upon thousands of just photographs, uh, I sit there and wonder what in the world is a 72 year old guy trying to start doing uh, to put together uh, a path that has quite a few years to get done unless I can get people in there to, to really start knocking this down. Yeah. And that's just those parts, uh, you know, again, our books that we have that are just here are the things that we think we're going to have to have that you can get access to, to read the pieces and copy the pieces at a fee. So uh, you, we can have you sit in your pajamas and do your family's research search or to be able to do uh, local history research um, on there. So that's what our goal is with just that part. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, it's, I, it's mountains of information. I mean, when you took me on my, on the tour there, I couldn't believe how much stuff is really in that building. And, and it, you know, it kind of stinks because the, you know, with COVID and everything going on, it just, I know like we were talking about, uh, you know, other uses for the spaces there uh, that you have and uh, you know, really, trying to kind of 
dip your toe in the, in the future of, you know, how to, how to get some funds for the place and how to utilize that space effectively. Yeah, we, we do have, we have a, a, um, a room where we have meetings. We hold uh, once a month meetings for nine months out of the year to the public on local history and, and uh, uh, demonstrations and those kind of things. So uh, we will continue doing that for as long as we can uh, right now we're doing them by live streaming. And, and in case any of you are wondering, yes, I am the world's worst live streaming person in the, in the County. Uh, and I'm, I'm gaining knowledge as I go, uh, but True. we have, we're doing it right now. Yeah. Doing great. Um, we have, we have uh, a space that we can put in a new uh, part to be able to have those meetings and state of the art stuff there, move our library into uh, much more secure and and uh, uh, open space than what we have at the moment, and then turn our 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 uh, part of the building, which which is from 1885, into a museum uh, that would be of the uh, local people's history and you know their input to uh, Westmoreland County. Uh, Westmoreland County is not have. We don't have one particular hero who was the greatest part and, and helped to make the county what it is. Uh, this county is made by and has been um, taken care of and, and moved forward by its citizens in the county. Mm -hmm. uh, they have always been a combined community process uh, for that and have made those things happen to make the county uh, what it is today uh, and where it's going to in the future. And that soul and that part is still within the community. I can see it uh, again through the Greensburg then and now and how they talk to each other. Um, that kind of spark is, is not always normal. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to have moved away from here for a while to realize what this little niche of the world is like and and it yes we may be a little bit conservative but um at the same time we hold values here that um are worth raising and, and bringing families into so um we're just be happy to be a part of that and looking at that future then the other part of that building is we have uh the old church which has 40 foot high ceilings and it has in the 1885 acoustics uh you know my voice will carry the whole way back to the back of the room. But again, my voice carries on a football <laughs> field without a microphone. Right. Um, but that's the, the, the gist of it is, is then we would be able to have uh, concerts going on there or conferences going on there or um, flea teaks inside. This is a building that's uh, 40 foot by almost 70 foot. Uh, with these massive ceilings and, and absolutely a uh, great building uh, with that we able to withstand for quite a few more years uh, things and give Hemfield Township a, 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 a conference place for not great conferences, but at least 150 to 200 people can get into that place. So uh, those are what's scheduled for us uh, on the building. Uh, so that would include uh, a, a new meeting space for us, a, a new uh, place for the, the library to be in, um, then a museum, uh, which would be about 3,000 square feet. And then this uh, the, the church area, which would be as a conference building, or as I said, um, open for small concerts and a great dance room. Um, oh yeah. I again, the, events it, being held in there. What well, about, yeah, it, uh, you know, like maybe like a, a wedding or something like this. Well, that wedding. would be the other thing is, is that we'd be able to have weddings uh, that you got married in the schoolhouse. And then the reception was uh, at, at the, the church mm -hmm. and uh, have a, a, a great amount of uh, different places that take some, take some great pictures. Um, again, we, you know, we're working with two 1880s, buildings uh and, and are fortunate to own both of those uh in, in the county uh, i really don't think there's many of uh any other historical societies that have own 
uh, that kind of thing. And we were just very fortunate to be able to uh, uh, get to those when when they came up for the opportunity uh, years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's a, a very unique space. I mean, it's very nice. Um, I mean, just the church part, the acoustics in there are are wild uh when you took me in there it was just uh you know something to see for sure and then to try and envision you know what what you guys have planned for it is uh it's pretty awesome yeah we we do have we had an architect do us some drawings and uh, again COVID got in the middle of all that Mm -hmm. so we uh, um are waiting for those drawings but uh, quite honestly this is the first time I've actually talked about this in public. I've done it privately for quite a few times, but never yeah. publicly. It's it's very interesting because I mean, you, you just, you have the space. It's uh, you know, it's just uh, tons of potential just sitting there and waiting, waiting to be used. And it's, you know, all of that surrounded by, I mean, you always see people having events and weddings in very interesting places like um, you know, the Heinz museum or any other kind of, uh, interesting, um, you know, historical places and things, uh, you know, why not the town you grew up in? Why not the, the town your parents grew up in or something like that? And, and not only, you know, are you having a, a great, uh, time while you're doing your event or whatever, but then there's all kinds of things all over the place where you can, you know, go around and check out, uh, different pictures and facts and history and all that stuff. Yeah. Again, um, it would give a venue that would be unique to this part of the the, the area. Um, Overton down there does a similar thing. We're worrying about that same style. Mm-hmm. Um, the the differences are is that uh, we're not quite as large as they are or have that kind of capacity, mm-hmm. but. Uh, being able to give that as a venue to that. And, and then the other parts are is um, we have the, the quality bands and, and musicians here to be able to uh, put on shows that they could do on their own. Uh, and, and it would help us become self-sufficient uh, and maintain uh, the library and the information out there so that it would last for generations of, of, uh, uh, the future. So they have a place to find those things and still be able to use the building um, mm-hmm. and, and make uh, the area have history in a spot where it could be accessed. Yeah. It's nice. And there's tons of room for parking out there. There's no shortage of that. No. Yeah. We, we I think we figured it out. If we do it right, we probably could park 150 to 200 cars, which is a, just about what we need. Yeah. Uh, if the crowd gets any larger than that, we figured we'd just park them over at the, uh, the other churches and bust them over or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, again, it, it, it has, uh, this is a five-year plan. It, at this point, it has a $500,000 price tag to it. And um, uh, I know that scares most, but I always keep in mind when I started the schoolhouse, we had a zero account uh, of money to start. And uh, we did that in six or seven years. And we raised mm-hmm. $60,000 uh, on our own to, to do that. Uh, yeah. So it can be done. It, it, and it's, it's like everything else. It's going to take a community of people uh, and uh, we have the things to do. We just have to get the, uh, the people and the bodies in there that, that have uh, interest in wanting to see these community things happen um, so that there's a future for uh, their children to, to live and, and, and feel the contents of uh, the rich history of the area. Yeah. And that's a, that's a thing I was actually kind of interested in was just like having a piece of that, that history of the area here. Like, you know, I always see on, um, on the Facebook group, uh, then and now, like I always see people will chime in and say, Hey, you know, I, I picked up one of the bricks, um, you know, somewhere down the line in an auction that has Greensburg printed into it and this, this, and that. And it's always, you know, I'm always jealous that I don't have much, uh, much stuff to hang on my walls, but I am uh, curious, like you guys have the, 
the ability now to digitize things and maybe like, would you guys uh, be willing to like sell prints of like some of the pictures and things from downtown and well, like yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. You said that uh, we just, now that we did this, uh, we actually have a collection of postcards that have been uh, digitized for us from Greensburg that just Greensburg alone has over 300 cards on it. Wow. And we have them from the entire county and, and they are been digitized uh, so that we could print those out. So we're going to be looking at that of being able to do those postcards in eight by 10 style. Mm-hmm. Ooh, um, very nice. That, yeah. That would be able to do that. And and then, you know, if we can on some of them, we'll be able to print the, the history on the back of that. So uh, you not only get the picture, but uh, uh, you get to be able to add the history to it uh, um, that has some meaning to what's there. But uh, the collection of, of postcards that we do have that are digitized, it is probably four, probably five or 600. Uh, Jeanette wow. Irwin, uh, Ligonier, uh, Mount Pleasant, uh, it, all those spots we have postcards for. We have just never said that again publicly because we had no venue, no way of, of getting those to the public in a reasonable amount. So, right. again, we're going to be doing those things over this winter and start picking up. Uh, pieces of those for the Greensburg area uh, Mm -hmm. to put together for selling. Uh, And again, and it is just so that we can maintain uh, what we own and move to, to the future. Yeah. And I think it's a great idea. I mean, anyone that's interested in picking any of that stuff up, I mean, would, would definitely be interested in continuing uh, to have you guys perform, you know, well and, and keep, you know, keep the lights on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, is the, for that part alone, I look at that and say, you know, we have seven nights a week and uh, we could have seven crews go in there and work on this stuff. And, uh, when we're out of that, we've already reached out to most of the other historical societies, uh, in the County and left them know we have the ability to help you digitize, uh, some of your stuff. And, and again, we would, um, work at getting their stuff uh, digitized because we firmly believe that we need to centralize uh, that material and knowledge for the entire county so that uh, they have equal abilities to be able to do things uh, to again to reach uh, the people who are interested in for their particular area. Um, so the same as is the, the being able to do the, the publishing. Um, we are setting ourselves up to be uh, publishers for the nonprofits in, in their booklets and, and items like that uh, to, to spread the knowledge of, of uh, the county. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, this being well over 200 years old, um, there's a good bit to, to be had uh, here. And uh, it's amazing what it is here. And it's been, kept away because nobody's had access to most of it. So yeah, uh, that's how we see our goal and role is to, to uh, um, our future. We had originally started out as a purely for the Germanic uh, groups of people. And uh, we finally convinced them that that was too narrow of a path and that there were uh, many more avenues of people. So, about seven or eight years ago, we started accepting uh, articles for coal mining and steel workers and uh, those types of things. So we have um, a whole bunch of stuff on Walworth Valve and uh, uh, some of the factories that were down in South Greensburg. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, so it, we're, we're looking at all that going, we aren't just a one horse pony uh, area. We really are interested in the entire County and uh, the combined history as, as it goes on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, just the, I mean, the steel and everything that was just down in Latrobe and, you know, there's so many different industries around uh, just in Westmoreland County that it's, it's insane. I mean, we were quite the self-sufficient little County here. Oh, yeah. It, it, you know, part of my history was I worked at Walworth Valve for 10 years. I started off as a 
an industrial radiographer and then uh, went into drafting. Um, but uh, South Greensburg was quite the place to be and was pretty well jumping greens. But at that time, Walworth had eight or 900 people. There must have been probably the better part of two to 3,000 people employed just within South Greensburg area in manufacturing of something. Wow. And uh, a lot of people don't know that. And Walworth, uh, during World War II, had well over 2,000 people. And we have one of the, the uh, uh, shells that they had been manufacturing there out of brass uh, that, you know, we can tell the story about. And it's in one of our showcases now uh, in, in our meeting area. So um, there is a ton of history and a ton of things to, to tell the people of, about their, their backgrounds here yeah. um, that we really enjoy do telling and, and uh, uh, unfolding those secrets to them. It's really interesting stuff. And like, I mean, I loved taking my tour down there and it was so much fun. And then uh, all of a sudden we got hit with, with the COVID and everything. So yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be reaching out to you to get some of those, those postcards, man. That's, that's right up my alley. I love, I love that stuff. Yeah. We may have, uh, we're looking at, at, at the possibility of green beacon uh, that just opened up. Yeah. Um, and, and those just happened to be my nephews that opened it up. Yeah. Um, so we Keeping made a tradition have, alive. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And again, uh, just it's, it's, um, it's that part. And as you well know, I'm involved in other, other groups besides just Baltimore Meyer. So right. uh, it works quite well for uh, the group that we build our reputation. In. You know, as I go through, I work with the trust uh, and the, uh, volunteering there. And then I also belong to uh, the Westmoreland Heritage, which is an arm of um, the uh, Laurel Highlands Visitor Bureau. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also belong to the Chamber of Commerce here and then the Westmoreland uh, County Foundations uh, we also belong to. So uh, we aren't just interested in ourselves and self-preservation. We truly are uh, committed to uh, trying to do what we can with and for the community and to uh, move the pieces forward for all groups involved. Um, again, culturally, the, the Greensburg area uh, is alive with those things. And if we ever get out of this uh, deal and be able to get back to, to uh, some of our uh, entertainment and things, um, you know, that's always been a big history of, of uh, Greensburg. Greensburg was was an area where uh, all the wagons came from. We were at the crossroads. So we always had to entertain um, mm -hmm. visitors overnight. And that's how we ended up with so many hotels. And then uh, those wagon people who had fixed and built wagons all ended up as car dealers. And now they're all out on Route 30. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the, the pieces all fit together. You just have to figure out how they fit into the puzzle and why there are so many car dealers in Greensburg in one spot. And yeah. There's a few places in the world that have that. And that part of that is, is that we have been um, a, the place where everybody came to get their vehicle uh, for almost 200 years or to get it repaired because uh, that was our business. That was our industry. Uh, that's where we uh, built Greensburg from was that. Mm -hmm. I remember you telling me that story and I was like, Whoa, this makes so much sense. <laughs> it was like, you know, you have the people, uh, Greensburg is just so nicely located, you know, between, uh, Monroeville and Pittsburgh and Ligonier and Latrobe and Irwin and all, and all of that. I mean, we are just dead smack right there in the center yes. of everything. And like you said, I mean, we really were the place to, to go through. And if you had to go through, you know, it sounded like a lot of people hung out for a little while. Well, yes. And, and as you work with, with uh, the, the different groups um, and I got to work a little bit with uh, that reimaging of Westmoreland County and talk to different people from different areas. Mm -hmm. And they all said the same thing. Greensburg is, the place that if you want to go to do anything in this county, 
Greensburg is the one that has the, the things going on in the culture and, and it has uh, the, the, the bands playing and, and the bars here have bands playing uh, and, and they all committed to, you know, where I live, there's nothing going on for, for weeks after weeks. And here it was every weekend we had something going on in Greensburg uh, that allowed you to get out and not cost a ton of money, uh, but to, to uh, get involved with, with the uh, cultural part. Uh, and again, you know, we're sitting there with the museum up there and, and uh, uh, that thing holds a, a, a facet of, of pieces that are just unbelievable for the size of our town. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have we have reached well beyond the norm for cities of this size, uh, and it has a lot to do with uh, our history and uh, the quality of people who have lived here for years uh, and what they believe in doing. So, yeah, um, absolutely. I see the you know I see the future getting brighter for for this area too. I mean, it's just such a great place. It's very vibrant. There's a lot of diversity here. There's people that are, you know, very, uh, just inclusive of everybody. And it just seems like it's, it's really just a, a nice tight knit community. And we all kind of understand that, you know, we got to go forward or we die. Yes. Yes. And that, that one is the one that, that, uh, uh, again, we, I try to bring up is, you know, we were much, even much more vibrant than what we are now. Mm-hmm. Uh, our past has that part hit there. And, and then it begins to give people reason and understanding of why the things that are here are here. Uh, and it has, again, to our location on crossroads of, of uh, uh, many different people coming through here. And, and the other one is uh, we have assimilated almost every group that's ever come here and made them part of our world. So uh, we, we really relish those parts as we've learned that they've added to um, the cultural history of, of the, the area and uh, have given us character that is unique in some ways to, to many of our, our uh, surrounding areas. So we're very lucky to be where we're at right now. Agreed. Very, very much. So I know, I know that we've, we've mentioned it a few times uh, throughout, but um, where are some of the places online and things like that, that people can, uh, you know, just kind of get involved. Okay. Well, the, what the webpage is um, uh, Baltimore.com. And, and we like keeping it that way because Baltimore.com. Uh, only comes to one or two spots and not the two or three million is normal when you make a search. Uh, Baltimore, by the way, was the first school teacher west of the Alleghenies. Uh, and that's why we have the name. Uh, we've considered changing it to Hempfield or something else. And uh, we've looked at that and said, we get lost in the world um, mm-hmm. and never would stand out. With Baltimore, we stand out as doing that. And, and again, that's where you can find us. It's not hard to do. Yeah. Um, the same way with our Facebook page, it is Baltimore and Baltimore. It, it runs uh, separate stuff, more of what goes on in Baltimore as far as Facebook. Uh, then there's the Greensburg then and now and Greensburg main street are both uh, were mine. And, and I've, I've been on those since I think 2011. Um, and you can get those to those two at, on Facebook and they'll always both reach back to show you how to get to uh, Baltimore. And that's usually the best place to get it. Uh, the information or get a hold of me. If my wife ever found out exactly how many hours I put on the, the uh, uh, <laughs> being on the Internet or online, uh, I'm sure I'd be looking for a diverse uh, lawyer uh, yeah of some sort but uh, you and me both <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, the other places for uh local stuff is uh, the, the westmoreland uh, uh cultural trust which ha- they have their own web page and it's very easy to find uh gives you a lot of the cultural things 
Uh, the the uh, Westmoreland Art Museum, again, uh, is a great place to, to be able to do things in fine places uh, or things to do. Um, they hold a lot of events uh, for the area. Laurel Highlands Visitor Bureau will, will get you to um, many different areas. Uh, and, and again, I go back to Westmoreland or to the Greensburg then and now. And um, we aren't just Greensburg then and now. We we've, we'll stretch out to almost anywhere that has something of interest or historical nature. Uh, you know, we've done articles on uh, the Ship Hotel and, and Bedford. And um, mm -hmm. we just got done doing one on Falling Water, uh, which has photos of before falling water had been built there. And it's a fascinating little trip that you get to do for a short period of time. And, and uh, um, so we continue to work at those parts uh, to, to do that. But that list of group will get you to almost uh, anywhere that you want to go. Um, we're hoping for in July or August, uh, Greensburg then and now in West in Bavard or the, the uh, Baltimore Historical Society, we may be putting together bus tours for going on these little road trips for a day to visit some of these places that are in the area. Um, and uh, you truly will get to tag along and throw in the history that I can uh, as we go there. Um, that sounds awesome. Well, it's better than the one that I usually go with my wife. She She's so completely tired of hearing me give history as we drive down <laughs> 30 or we go here or there. Um, and I tried to tell her that I was a nice, quiet boy until I moved in and, and uh, uh, became part of an Italian family. And then I found out I I had to stand up and start talking or else uh, they were going to run right over top of me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, Tom. Well, thanks for getting on the show today, man. I, I always appreciate talking to you. It's just, it's so interesting to just kind of see, you know, where we're at now and, and know where we came from. That's well, uh, one of the most important things I think that anyone can do. It, it, uh, as I said, it's morphed into something that I'm quite proud of, of being uh, involved in and, uh, uh happy to, uh, bring those parts to um, my members there. That that membership has something like 7,500 people that are members. Um, mm -hmm. And we get to see quite a few of those. Um, the other one I wanted to let you all know is we're going to be trying to do a virtual uh, walkthrough of Baltimore in April. We usually do an open house. Um, and I doubt very much whether we're going to be able to do that in person. So I'm going to take a crack at, at walking through and doing some of this and uh, uh, talk about those parts uh, in April. And then the other one that we is a big one is we standardly do is uh, August. We do a homecoming uh, style uh, deal in August and bring in all of uh, the families and try to get together with everybody uh, to review um, the history that we do have in, in the uh, um, the library and open the library up to the public for free for that month. There's no mm -hmm. charges or anything else. And again, that's just for us to try to uh, bring in more members and for people to come through and walk and, and uh, talk. And, and that's what we're really uh, trying to do is to reach as many as we can. But this has been a, a true honor and, and, and I'm very happy. I was uh, able to, uh, to do this with you today, sir. Same here. I, I, like I said, I love talking to you. I love hearing the history and things like that. And it's just, it's so nice to, you know, just, just know about what, uh, you know, I love, I love the community so much and it's so nice to, to see like what, what it was back in the day and, and things and, and to know that somebody's keeping track of all this, all the crazy stuff. <laughs> Well, I'm, I, as you can tell, I'm not alone. Uh, uh, a lot of right. my members uh, there uh, are quite helpful, but we also mm -hmm. have the same kind of people who have helped to build Baltimore over the years. Um, you know, this has never been a one person deal. Right. Uh, so uh, I'm just happy to be a, a part of that process. Very good. 
All right, Tom, stick around, and uh, thanks for being on the show. Okay, thank you. All right, there goes Tom. It's always a great time talking with him. He knows so much stuff about everything, and it's so interesting to hear him talk about the area and what it used to be and what it is now. Be sure to check out the Facebook page, Greensburg Then and Now. It's very interesting to see all the photos from way back in the day. It's very cool. And then uh, be sure to check out Balsermeyer.com. That is the website for the Historical Society. And they also have a Facebook page that you can check out. All of those links are right down there in the description. Again, this episode of this podcast was brought to you by Brian Nicholas Jewelry. They are right inside of the Pond and Jewelry Exchange. So it's definitely a little hidden gem inside of Greensburg. I mean, they're not your typical jewelry shop. There's no stuffiness. There's no intimidation or anything like that. They're really there to help you out. And the fact that they are a husband and wife team really makes it a welcoming atmosphere. As I said earlier, you have access to a master jeweler and a certified appraiser right there on site. You can find them on Instagram, Facebook at Brian Nicholas Jewelry, and uh, you can even just stop in and say, hey, that's how loose the atmosphere is there. It's really cool. Just pop in, say, hey ask some questions, and they'll tell you what's up. Go check them out. I hope you guys have an enjoyable rest of your week and a safe and healthy start to 2021. We'll see you guys next week.